Now, let us start our discussion from where we left in the previous lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we started with a discussion with De Morbs law and we discovered how De Morbs law is a really powerful tool to find nth root of any complex number. We even derived a general equation for finding the nth root of any complex number and then we were finding the nth root of unity. We discovered some really interesting properties related to the nth roots of unity. We found out that the n roots of unity can always be expressed as z to the power 0, z to the power 1, z square up to z to the power n minus 1 where z was equals to cos of 2 pi by n plus iota of sine 2 pi by n. When we tried to plot these roots on an argon diagram, we found out that all these roots lie on a circle of unit radius or in another words the mod of all these roots z to the power 0 1 up to n minus 1 is unity and we even discovered one more thing that all these roots divide this circle into n equal parts. So, if I want to plot them say all these roots divide my circle into n equal parts that is in another way in another words I can even say that all these n roots form the vertices of a n sided regular polygon which lies on this unit circle. I am repeating once again what I want to say is all these n roots form the vertices of a n sided unit of a n sided regular polygon which lies on this unit circle. I hope you are getting this. The next property which we discovered was summation of z to the power k where k varies from 0 to n minus 1 that is summation of that is z to the power 0 plus z to the power 1 up to n minus 1 or the summation of all these roots is nothing but 0. We even found out that the multiplication of all these roots sorry z to the power 0, z to the power 1 into z to the power n minus 1 or I can even raise multiplication of from k0 to n minus 1 z to the power k is equals to minus 1 to the power n minus 1. I hope you all remember this discussion. The next thing that we which well even the next thing that we were studying but was we were finding the cube root of unity. And while start finding the cube root of unity, we came across a new term that was omega, which even represents one of the cube roots of unity. And we saw that one omega was equals to minus 1 plus iota of root 3 by 2. This is all we have studied in the previous lecture. We even found some really interesting properties related to this term omega. This term omega has some really very fascinating properties and the most interesting property related to this omega was that omega square is always equals to 1 by omega which is equals to omega bar. Once again we said that omega was minus 1 plus iota root 3 by 2. When we did omega square that turned out to be omega bar that is minus 1 minus iota of root 3 by 2. Some even uh, some properties which we even saw related to omega were 1 plus omega plus omega square was equals to 0 and 1 into omega into omega square which is equals to omega q was equals to 1. So, these are some really interesting properties related to omega. Now, why I am emphasizing so much on this omega? This is because using these properties of omega, it becomes really simple to simplify some of the uh, very common mathematical equation. I will illustrate what I want to say from this. But what I want to convey uh, is that this omega can be used as a really strong mechanical tool 
to solve some equations. I uh, will try to explain what I want to say. For example, I have this equation x square plus x plus 1 equals to 0. This is a very common mathematical equation we all know. I can write this as x square of minus of minus x minus sorry. I will write it more specifically. I can write this as x square minus of minus 1 into x plus 1 equals to 0. I hope you all are getting this. What I have done is I have replaced this plus by minus of minus 1. Now from this equation I know that omega plus omega square is minus 1. So I can write this as x square minus minus 1 can be replaced by omega plus omega square. So what I get here is omega plus omega square into x and 1 can be replaced by omega into omega square. So what I get here is omega into omega square this complete term is equal to 0. I can easily simplify this as x minus omega into x minus omega square is equal to 0. So we can see how we can simplify an equation of this stuff on this type in terms of omega. That is what I want to say is using these three properties of omega it sometimes becomes really simple to simplify some equations. Now for your convenience I am writing the simplified form of some of the very common equations and again I will request you all to note down the expansions which I am going to write because they will be a really quick step in solving some of the problems related to complex number or maybe even real numbers. So let us start. I can I am defining this topic as just as highlights of omega because this, there is nothing big to understand here what I am what we are try, right now doing is we are just trying to simplify some of the equations using this omega. So let us call this topic as highlights of omega and let us write or let us try to simplify some of the equations using it. So the first simplification is the one which we wrote that is x square plus x plus 1 can be always written as x minus omega into x minus omega square. The second one which we can write is I can do the same thing for the plus sign. So if in case if I of having x square plus x plus 1 if I have something of the form x square minus x plus 1 equals to 0 I can write this as x plus omega into x plus omega square. The third one which I have is you can write x square minus xy plus y square as x minus omega y into x minus omega square y. The fourth one which I have is I can write x square plus x square plus y square as x plus omega y. Uh, uh, one thing this is plus sign and this is minus sign. It is the same as the first equation just that we have a y term extra here. This is equal to x plus omega y into x plus omega square y. The fifth one which I have is x cube plus y cube can be even written as x plus y into x plus omega y into x plus omega square y. Similarly, we can write x cube minus y cube as x minus y, x minus omega y and x minus omega square y. The sixth one which I have is we can write x square plus y square plus z square minus xy minus yz minus zx always as x plus y plus z into x plus omega y plus omega square z into x plus omega square y 
plus omega z and the last one which I will write is x q plus y q plus z q minus thrice of x y z can be written as x plus y plus z into x plus omega y plus omega square z into x plus omega square y plus omega z. I hope you all have noted these down. So the first one was related to the expansion of x square plus x plus 1. The second one we had was similar to the first one just that we had an additional y term. Then the important one are this the expansion of x cube plus y cube x square plus y square plus z square minus x y y z z x and x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3 x y z. You can easily prove these all equations by expanding the right hand side and putting all these th using these three values and we land out to the equation on the left hand side. You just note it I will even request you all to just learn them all or just keep a hint of these all because these all will be really helpful when we, uh, when we will try to solve some equations of this type. We will see some questions based on this later but for now I will request you all to note these down. So now I think you all are comfortable with finding this cube uh, the nth root of any complex number and especially the nth root of unity. Now let us solve some questions based on nth root of complex number so that we can apply the concepts we have learned and we can solve some doubt in case we have related to the topic. So the first question which we will solve is the question I am given is if alpha 1 comma alpha 2 up to alpha n are the n roots of unity unity we have to find the value of this equation which is 1 minus alpha 1 into 1 minus alpha 2 up to 1 minus alpha n. Now let us try to solve this question. What we have given is that alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha n are the nth roots are the n roots of unity. And we have to find is the value of this equation. Now we know that uh, what we are given is the n roots of unity. The n roots of unity can be represented by this equation that is x to the power 1 by n. This would be the equation to represent uh, to get the n roots of unity. So I can always write this equation as x to the power n minus 1 equals to 0. By binomial expansion I can write this as x minus 1 into the x to the power n minus 1 plus x to the power n minus 2 plus x plus 1 equals to 0. This something nothing I have just expanded this equation this expression I have written this equation. Now one more thing what we are given is alpha 1 al 1 alpha 1 alpha 2 up to alpha 1 n are the roots of this equation. I think this should be alpha to the power n minus 1 because n would be is going to have n, n roots. So this is alpha to the power 0 so this is alpha to the power n minus 1. Even the question should be here we have to find the value of this term. Just uh, correct this in your notebooks even we have uh, the n roots are 1 alpha 1 alpha 2 till alpha to the power n minus 1 and we have to find the value of 1 minus alpha 1 1 minus alpha 2 1 minus alpha n minus 1. Okay. Now what we are given is these are the n roots of this equation that is x to the power n minus 1. So I even I can even write this equation as x minus 1 into the first root that is alpha 1 minus 1 alpha 1 minus sorry and 
now the first question that we have to solve is that we are given that 1 alpha 1 comma alpha 2 up to alpha n minus 1 are the n roots of unity and what we have to prove we have to prove that the value of 1 minus alpha 1 into 1 minus alpha 2 till 1 minus alpha n minus 1 is equals to n. Now let us start solving this question. So the first thing that we know that these are the n roots of unity. So what I say is the n roots of unity can be obtained by solving this equation that is x equals to 1 to the power 1 by n. I can even write this equation as x to the power n minus 1 is equals to 0. When I try solving, when I expand this equation, what I get is x minus 1 into x to the power n minus 1, x to the power n minus 2 till x plus 1 is equals to 0. Now we have already been given that alpha 1, alpha 2 till alpha n minus 1 are the roots of this equation. So I can even write x to the power n minus 1 as x minus 1 into x minus alpha 1 into x minus alpha 2 till x minus alpha n minus 1. Now this is the expansion of this equation and this alpha 1, alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha n minus 1 are the roots of this equation. I can even write x to the power n minus 1 as this. So I can easily equate these two terms because they both equals to x to the power, they both are equal to x to the power n minus 1. So on equating these two, what I will get is x minus alpha 1 into x minus alpha 2 till x minus alpha n minus 1 is equals to x to the power n minus 1 plus x to the power n minus 2 till x plus 1 or in other ways what I can even say is alpha 1 alpha 2 to alpha n minus 1 are the roots are the n minus 1 roots of this equation that is x to the power n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus x plus 1. Now let us get back to the question once again. What we have to find is the value of 1 minus alpha 1, 1 minus alpha 2 till 1 minus alpha n minus 1 and what we have here is something of the form x minus alpha 1, x minus alpha 2 to x minus alpha n minus 1. So what I am doing is I am putting, substituting x equals to 1 here in the equation. What we get is 1 minus alpha 1, 1 minus alpha 2 till 1 minus alpha n minus 1 is equals to 1 to the power n minus 1, 1 to the power n minus 2 till 1 plus 1 and this is all n times so which is equal to summation of 1 1 1 1 n times which is nothing but equal to 1. So we have proved what we were asked to prove. I hope you all understood the way the approach which we, with, with which we solved the question. The first thing that we did was we knew uh, that uh, we had to find the n roots of unity and we were given those roots. So first we tried to obtain the, the, that the equation for which alpha 1, alpha 1 and alpha 2 to alpha n minus 1 were the root. So we saw that that equation was x to the power n minus 1. Then we expanded this equation and we found its expansion was this. We even knew that since a1, alpha 1, alpha 2 are the roots of this equation, this equation can be even written in the form of x minus 1, x minus alpha 1, x minus alpha 2 till x minus alpha n minus 1. Then since the, all, both these values were equal to x to the power n minus 1, we equated them and we just substituted x by 1 and we solved this question.
let us try one another question once again based upon the n roots of unity so the next question which I have to solve so the next question that we have to solve is we have to find the value of this equation that is summation k will vary from 0 to 10 and we have to find the value of this equation sin 2 pi k by 11 minus iota of cos 2 pi k by 11. We to find the value of this equation sin of 2 pi k by 11 minus iota of cos 2 pi k by 11. Yes. So, let us start solving this question. First, what I want to do here in solving this question is I want to convert this in the form of polar, polar coordinates. The general equation of polar coordinates that is cos theta plus iota sin theta because that seems to be the first step uh, which I will take while solving this question because that that is how we have solved all the questions and that is the general representation for any com, uh, complex number in polar form. So, what I can do is I can write this sign as minus of iota square sin 2 pi pi k by 11 minus iota of cos 2 pi k by 11 and we have to find summation of this where k would vary from 0 to 10. Now, I am taking minus iota common here. So, what I get inside is cos 2 pi k by 11 plus iota sin 2 pi k by 11 where k would vary from 0 to 10. Now, the same now, I am more comfortable with this type of equation because this is the type of equation we have always dealt with. Now, when I observe this term very clearly, this is something of the form of cos of 2 pi k by 11 plus sin of 2 pi k by 11 where the k is going to vary, sorry, I have written the question on the limits are from 1 to 10. where k is going to vary from 1 to 10. Now, does not this re represent our equation uh, for so finding the n roots of unity where we used to write that the nth roots of unity would be in the form of z to the power 0, z to the power z 1, z to the power n minus 1 where z used to be equal to 2n pi by uh, 2n pi by uh, 2k pi by n where n used to be the nth root of unity and k used to vary from 0 to n minus 1. So, in this case we have something of the form of cos of 2 pi k by 11 where in this case uh, k is varying from 1 to 10 in the denominator we have 11. So, this res uh, resembles something like for finding out the 11th root of unity but the problem is that the limits we have are from 1 to 10. For having the n summation of n roots of unity we should have limits from 0 to 10. So, I can write this we have taken minus out of common as I am changing the limits from 0 to 10. So, what I have inside is cos of 2 pi k by 11 plus iota of sin 2 pi k by 11 minus 1. I have done a minus 1 here because I have changed the limit that was from 1 to 10 to 0 to 10 and for that I had to add one more value here that is cos of 0 plus iota sin 0. So, I have subtracted 1 even from here. So, what I have outside is now minus iota plus I can this now I know this this is nothing but this summation of the 11 roots of unity 
which is summation of this minus 1. Now we already know that the summation of all the roots of unity is equal to 0. So this equation, this term would be equal to 0. So our, what we will get in the, what we will get as the final value is minus iota into minus 1 which is equal to iota. Let us once again see what was our approach while solving this question. So what we are given was the value where that we have to find the summation of this value. The first thing we just tried my mind by after seeing this question was let us first convert this in the form of cos theta plus iota sin theta because that is the form we are all comfortable solving with. So what I did was I took minus iota common from this here and what we got was cos of 2 pi k by 11 plus iota sin 2 pi by 11 and the limits were varying from 1 to 10. Now this resembles something to me this is in something of the form of the n roots of unity but the problem here was that the limits were from 1 to 10 instead of 0 to 10. So we just changed the limit we changed the limit from 0 to 10 and to change the limits we had to subtract a 1 from here and subtracting the 1 from here we found we, we found out we changed this term to 0 because the summation of n roots of unity is always 0. So we got 0 here and the final value was iota. I hope you all understood this problem. Does someone have a doubt even now? Is everyone comfortable? Okay. So now we have solved some questions based upon the n roots of unity. We are going to discuss lots of problem based upon this further. But now we will proceed and discuss another topic related to complex number. So up till now we have studied lots of things related to the com, uh, related to the polar and cartesian representation of complex number the next topic that we are going to start is uh, something related to the ex uh, one more type of representation of complex number and uh, i'll request you all to pay complete attention towards this topic because this is not just important with respect to an exam like iitj or maybe your cbse boards exam but this is also very important topic related to uh, uh, simplifying the computation related to complex number and it's, it's, it gives us a very strong power of even complex number. So let us start this topic say I have to find a value of some equation uh, not equation I have to find the value of e to the power z or say I want to find the value of sin of z where z is a real number. Now if my z would have been a real, uh, z is a complex number. Now if my z would have been a real number then finding the value of e to the power of sin z would be have been really easy because in that, that case what, a, what my approach would be if I, if I was asked to find the value of sin x what I will do is I will first find, measure x as an angle and I will say for example my x is equal to pi by 4 or pi by 8 or something I will see that this is the quantitative value of x and based upon that value I will find the value of sin x and similarly if I were asked to find a value of e to the power 3 or e to the power 4 I will say that 3 or 4 is some measurable quantity and hence I can easily find the value of 3 and 4 or sin of pi by 4 or pi by 8. But the problem in this case with finding the value of e to the power sin z is we cannot visualize z in this case as a measurable angle or traditionally a length or any measurable quantity because this z even contains of consists of an imaginary part. So how should we proceed solving such questions? So let us refer back to our first discussion that we had related to complex number. What we said but that these that the complex numbers always have evolved from real numbers or in other words I can even say that this complex number is a superset consisting of real numbers 
one more thing which we even defined that time was that because complex number is a superset of real numbers any structure which i should which i define for complex number should satisfy or should be in synchronization with the existing structure that is defined for real number whatever i would speak here is for real number ex there is always a definition for there exists a definition for a to the power x now if i go and invent some definition for a to the power z where z is a complex number and now my z happens to be a real number x number x then the value of e to the power z where z is a real number calculated considering z as a real number and calculated considering z as a complex number have to be same i am repeating once again what i said what i said was if z happens to be a real number x or something then the value of z then the value of e to the power x calculated considering x as a real number and using the definition of e to the power x for real number and calculated considering z as a complex number and considering the definition of e to the power z for complex number has to be the same because at the end x is the same number even considered as real or considered as complex 